Welcome to the Kirby family. By investing in a Kirby vacuum, you are investing in a complete home cleaning system. This is an introductory video. Always read the owner's manual before using the system. During this video, pay attention to the alert symbol and signal words throughout the video. If you cannot locate your manual, please contact the Kirby company or visit us online at www.kirby.com. Chapter 1 covers the basic parts of the unit. Turn the unit on or off by pressing the power button. The toe touch control is used to select the proper cleaning height. If the unit is too high off the floor, it will not clean properly. To set the proper height, first lower the nozzle all the way down by repeatedly pressing the upper toe touch control pedal. Press the lower pedal one notch at a time to raise the unit. The lowest setting is used for low pile carpets. Raise the nozzle one or two clicks for hard surface floors and longer fiber carpets. When vacuuming pet hair, raise the unit three clicks. The pedals below the power button control the Tech Drive Power Assist. Turn the unit on, adjust the unit to the proper cleaning height, then push down the right pedal, marked D for drive, to turn Tech Drive on. This makes it easy to push the unit while vacuuming. The unit can be used without Tech Drive Power Assist. Put Tech Drive in neutral by pushing the left button marked with the letter N down. Before turning the unit off, always raise the nozzle as high off the floor as possible and then put tech drive in neutral. This makes it easier to push the unit when it is off. To avoid damage to the floor, put tech drive power assist in neutral before vacuuming soft tile or hard floors. The brush roll indicator light will confirm if the brush roll is spinning. When the brush roll is spinning, the light will shine continuously. The light should be on for carpet cleaning. If the light does not come on, the brush roll is not spinning. The belt lifter determines whether or not the brush roll will spin. The belt lifter is also used to convert the unit into other modes. When using the belt lifter, raise the unit all the way up, turn off, and unplug the unit. Caution, do not turn the belt lifter when the unit is on. Raise the headlight hood, flip out the handle on the belt lifter and turn it counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. The belt lifter will catch the belt and lift it off the rotating shaft to prevent the brush roll from spinning. Close the handle and lower the headlight hood to use it as a straight suction cleaner. The brush roll indicator light will be off. Re-engage the brush roll prior to storage. Leaving the belt stretched on the hook for extended periods may damage the belt. To re-engage the belt so the brush roll spins, turn the unit off and unplug it. Raise the headlight hood, flip out the handle, and turn the lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. Close the handle and lower the headlight hood. When it is time to change the disposable bag, turn off and unplug the unit. Unzip the outer bag and pull out the top adapter along with the disposable bag. It is time to change the disposable bag when the dirt reaches the full line. Check that the bag support strap is attached to the top adapter. If not, thread the strap through the small hole on the adapter and secure over the stud. To install a new disposable bag, first place the faceplate over the bottom tab, then pivot the faceplate up and attach the tabs over the holders. Insert the top adapter and disposable bag inside the permanent bag and zip completely. Caution! Do not use the unit as a vacuum cleaner without a filter bag in place. For best performance, use only genuine Kirby disposable bags. 
The upright handle has a series of fasteners that keep the cord out of the way while vacuuming. The cord snaps into the holders on the back of the handle. With the upper cord hook in the up position, wrap the cord toward the rear of the unit and slide the cord under the holder on the hook. The cord can only be inserted into this holder when the upper cord hook is in the up position. The cord can be wrapped around both hooks for storage. To release the cord, rotate the upper cord hook down. The first loop will remain in the holder. The Mini mTOR collects large, heavy particles that are picked up while vacuuming. To empty the Mini mTOR, turn off the unit and unplug it from the outlet. Remove the top of the bag by pressing the release button. Then, grasp the Mini mTOR by the handle at the bottom. Rotate it away from the unit and lift it off. Hold the Mini mTOR over a newspaper and shake it to remove any debris. Avoid intentionally picking up heavy objects. They could damage the unit. Slide the Mini mTOR over the exhaust port, lining up the raised lines. Rotate the Mini mTOR toward the bag until it clicks to lock in place. To reattach the bag, insert the tab into the handle latch. If the Mini mTOR is not securely locked in place, the safety switch will not allow the unit to turn on. The tilt latch locks the handle to make moving the unit easier. Sliding the tilt latch toward the bag allows the user to push down on the handle to lift the unit over a door threshold or throw rug. Sliding the tilt latch away from the bag locks the base in place before lifting the unit off the floor. The unit can be lifted using the convenient bag arm handle or with the grip in the center of the handle. The tilt latch also allows the unit to be stored in a vertical position. First, lower the handle all the way down, then move the tilt latch away from the bag. Before using the unit again, press down slightly and hold on to the handle. Move the tilt latch to the center position. Caution. Firmly grasp the handle before unlocking the handle tilt latch lever. Chapter 2 will review the portable cleaning mode. The unit can easily be converted to a portable cleaner for mattresses and carpeted stairs. Do not use the portable cleaner on upholstered furniture as it could damage some fabrics. To convert the unit, turn off and unplug the unit. Remove the power cord from the handle. Then release the top of the permanent bag from the handle. Use one hand to push the button at the base of the handle and the other hand to pull the handle up and out of the slot. Push the portable handle into the slot and then insert the bag latch with the zipper facing up. Leave the sheet or a mattress cover on the mattress to protect the mattress when cleaning. In addition, use the belt lifter to turn the brush roll off. Also, make sure that Tech Drive Power Assist is in neutral. It is important to leave a sheet on the mattress to turn off the brush roll and to put Tech Drive Power Assist in neutral before cleaning a mattress. Failure to follow these steps could result in damage to the mattress. Caution. Avoid potential entanglement by keeping hair and loose clothing away from the unit. Lower the unit all the way, then turn on the vacuum. When finished, raise the head and turn the power off. To remove the portable handle, remove the bag from the handle by pressing down with your finger on the bag release button. Use one hand to push the button at the base of the handle and the other hand to pull the handle up and out of the slot. The Kirby system comes with a wide variety of attachments to use in the canister mode. To convert the unit into a canister, raise the base of the unit Turn the motor off and unplug the unit. 
Attach the portable handle. Raise the headlight hood and turn the belt lifter until the red arrows line up. Unlock the nozzle and lift it away. Allow the shaft to cool, then clean off any debris before assembling the hose. Caution! It is important to keep the motor shaft free of lint and debris buildup. Avoid potential burns by allowing the motor shaft to cool before touching it or removing lint from it. To attach the hose, slide the two hooks over the attaching bar, push the hose up against the unit, then lock in place. Make sure to lower the headlight hood. If the hose is not locked firmly in place, the safety switch will not allow the unit to turn on. To attach tools to the hose, push lightly while twisting the tool onto the hose. One or two extension wands can be attached to extend your reach. Use the duster brush on contoured or irregular surfaces. Do not use the duster brush to clean television screens as it could scratch the screen. The upholstery tool is used for cleaning furniture and carpeted steps. The suction control grip has a valve that slides back and forth to adjust suction. The suction control grip can be used with the attachment hose between extension tubes or at the end of the tubes to create a different angle. Use the wall and ceiling brush to vacuum flat vertical surfaces. You can rotate it on the attachment grip to vacuum the tops of high surfaces. The crevice tool with its removable brush cleans dirt from tight places and carpet edges. The surface nozzle can be used on bare floors or for cleaning under low furniture. Attach the inflator deflator tool to clean very tight areas or to deflate toys. With a simple conversion, the unit can be used in the blower mode. If desired, Attach the portable handle, turn off and unplug the unit. Remove the nozzle and fasten the air intake guard onto the front of the unit. Make sure to lower the headlight hood. Remove the bag and attach the hose to the air exhaust port. Line up the grooves and twist the hose toward the unit until it clicks to lock in place. Both the air intake guard and the hose must be firmly locked in place or the safety switches will not allow the unit to turn on. Attach the inflator deflator tool to the hose to inflate small low pressure items. The inflator deflator is intended to be used for short durations only. Failure to follow this instruction could cause damage to the unit including overheating. The portable sprayer is only used in the blower mode. Caution! Never use flammable or combustible liquids in the sprayer. To set up the portable sprayer, unscrew the jar and fill it three quarters full. If the sprayer must be tilted during use, use less liquid. Screw the jar and sprayer tightly together and connect the sprayer to the hose. Point the sprayer away from the unit. Turn the unit on and squeeze the trigger to spray. Adjust the spray by turning the control on the trigger. Squeeze the trigger fully and use slow sweeping motions. Warning, do not use pesticides or chemical products in the portable sprayer. After use, remove the jar and dip tube Rinse all pieces thoroughly, allow to dry, and then reassemble for storage. The portable shampooer is also used in the blower mode only. It is designed for cleaning areas that are difficult to reach with the carpet shampoo system. The portable shampooer is not recommended for use on upholstery fabrics such as silk, brocade, or velvet.
If in doubt, try a test patch before you shampoo further. To set up the portable shampooer, fill the jar with water to the first line. Add Kirby Carpet Shampoo to the second line on the jar. Screw the jar and portable sprayer tightly together. Attach the shampooer cap to the end of the portable sprayer. Connect the sprayer to the hose, point it away from the unit, and pull the trigger to spray suds. The suds volume can be adjusted by turning the control on the trigger. Lay an even layer of suds over the area to be cleaned. Work the suds into the surface with a brush or cloth until they disappear. Rinse and clean the portable shampooer while the area dries. Allow the surface to dry completely, then vacuum to remove the dry residue, which contains the dirt and debris. Only use genuine Kirby carpet shampoo, available from your local distributor. This section covers the optional multi-surface shampoo system, which can be used to clean both carpeting and hard surface floors. Before using the shampoo system on carpets, vacuum the carpet thoroughly. To convert the unit to a shampoo system for carpets, turn off and unplug the unit. Release the outer permanent bag and remove the mini mTOR. Make sure the unit is raised all the way up. Remove the nozzle. Make sure the bristled brush for carpets is inserted in the shampoo system. If you need to insert the carpet brush, turn the belt lifter of the shampoo system to the right until the green arrows line up. The nozzle should not yet be attached to the system. Turn the shampoo system over and pull up on the hard floor rotary mop to remove it. Slide the belt over the center of the carpet brush roll and insert it into the shampoo system. While pushing up on the belt with your finger, use the handle on the belt lifter to turn it left until the red arrows line up. The belt lifter will catch and stretch the belt. Check to make sure that the baffle strip is in place on the bottom of the shampoo system to avoid potential damage to the carpet. Center the shampoo system in front of the unit. Guide the head of the nozzle onto the attaching bar. Press the nozzle up against the unit and lock in place. Turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. This will allow the brush roll to spin so the system will clean properly. Insert the waste tray. Lower the headlight hood. On the shampoo tank, Make sure the filter and the screen are in place. Next, prepare the shampoo solution. Unscrew the large cup from the top of the shampoo tank. Fill the tank with water to the first line for small rooms and the third line for large rooms. Use warm water, not hot as over foaming may occur. Then add carpet shampoo. Add one capful for every line of water. Caution. Do not use flammable or combustible liquids in the multi-surface shampoo system. Use only genuine Kirby cleaning solutions. When finished, replace the cup. Note that using more than the appropriate number of cupfuls could cause over foaming and with less, there may not be enough foaming. One tank full of solution should clean an area about 9 feet by 12 feet. Larger carpets may require emptying the waste tray and refilling the tank. Heavily stained carpets may require more than one shampooing or may require the use of one of Kirby's stain removers. Firmly connect the elbow hose to the shampoo tray. Attach the tank by matching up the lines on the tank and the exhaust port. Rotate it toward the unit to lock firmly in place. Then connect the other end of the hose to the bottom of the shampoo tank. Plug the unit in and turn it on. If the unit does not turn on, check that the shampoo tank and the nozzle are both firmly locked in place. If not, the safety switches will not allow the unit to turn on. Lower the nozzle 
as far as possible. Turn the suds control valve to the carpet setting and start moving the unit. Suds flow should start immediately. Pull the unit back slowly. Suds should dispense the full width of the tray. If not, move the unit more slowly or turn off the power and check to make sure the filter screen on the tank is in place or clean the shampoo filter if necessary. Once the surface has been covered with a blanket of suds, turn the suds control valve off and go over the entire area again until all the shampoo is worked into the carpet. Scrub in multiple directions for best results. Dirty cleaning solution will collect in the waste tray. Check the indicators on the edge of the waste tray cover. When liquid begins to fill the area below the indicators, it is time to empty the waste tray. Turn off the unit, lift the waste tray, and carry it to the sink to empty. Reinsert the waste tray before continuing to shampoo. When finished, raise the nozzle and let it run for 15 seconds to remove the excess water from the brush roll. Turn the unit off. Unplug the unit, then remove and empty the waste tray. Remove the elbow hose from the shampoo tank. Remove the shampoo tank. Raise the headlight hood, then turn the belt lifter until the red arrows line up. Turn the lock to release the nozzle. Carefully lift the shampoo nozzle and carry it to the sink and pour out any remaining solution. To clean the tank, remove the sponge filter and the screen cap and rinse all thoroughly. Rinse the tank in cold water. Disassemble the shampoo system over the sink. First, turn the belt lifter to the right until the green arrows line up. Turn the system over and pull up on the ends of the brush roll to remove it. Rinse the shampoo system and dry all parts. Dry all parts completely before storing. Once the carpet is completely dry, reassemble the unit as an upright and thoroughly vacuum the shampooed area. This will remove the dried residue, which contains dirt and debris. In a similar fashion, the multi-surface shampoo system can be used to clean hard surface floors. Before using the shampoo system on hard floors, vacuum or sweep the floor to remove any large debris. Make sure the rotary mop for hard floors is inserted in the shampoo system. Center the shampoo system in front of the unit. Make sure the unit is raised all the way up. Guide the head of the nozzle onto the attaching bar. Press the nozzle up against the unit and lock in place. Turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. This will allow the rotary mop to spin so the system will clean properly. Lower the headlight hood and insert the waste tray. When cleaning unsealed wood or manufactured floors, only small amounts of liquid should be used for best results and to prevent damage to the floor. When cleaning these types of floors, a spray bottle of cleaning solution should be used. Attach the empty shampoo tank to the exhaust port. It is not necessary to attach the elbow hose. Spray a fine mist of cleaning solution on a small area of the floor. Do not over wet the floor. Only a small amount of solution is needed. Make sure Tech Drive Power Assist is in neutral by pressing the left button down. Press the toe touch control upper pedal repeatedly until the rotary mop contacts the floor. Turn the unit on and move it back and forth to clean the floor. Mist the floor with additional cleaner as needed. Turn the unit off and empty the waste tray when necessary. Allow the floor to dry completely. If necessary, use a towel to wipe up any excess fluid. 
For sealed floor surfaces, such as tile or vinyl, the shampoo tank can be used to dispense cleaning solution on the floor instead of using the spray bottle. To prepare the cleaning solution, first unscrew the large cup from the top of the shampoo tank. Fill the tank with water to the first line for small rooms and the third line for large rooms. Then, add one capful of cleaning solution using the cap from the shampoo tank to measure the solution. When finished, replace the cup. One tank full of solution should clean an area about 10 feet by 12 feet. Larger areas may require refilling the tank. Attach the tank by matching up the lines on the tank and the exhaust port, rotate it toward the unit to lock firmly in place. Firmly connect the elbow hose to the shampoo tray, then connect the other end to the bottom of the shampoo tank. Lower the nozzle as far as possible. Turn the suds control valve to the hard floor setting and start moving the unit. Do not turn the valve to the carpet setting as it will apply too much solution to the floor. Move the unit back and forth slowly to clean the floor. Turn the valve on the shampoo tank to off and go over the floor again to pick up remaining solution. Dirty cleaning solution will collect in the waste tray. Check the indicators on the edge of the waste tray cover. When liquid begins to fill the area below the indicators, it is time to empty the waste tray. Rinse and reinsert the waste tray before you continue cleaning. To clean along edges, make sure the tank is on the opposite side of the edge being cleaned. When finished, raise the nozzle, then turn the unit on and let it run for 15 seconds to remove the excess water from the rotary mop. Turn the unit off. Unplug the unit. Remove the shampoo system to rinse and rinse all parts thoroughly. Allow all parts to thoroughly dry before storing. Over time, fibers on the mop will also wear down. When this happens, the mop will not recover as much liquid from the floor and should be replaced. Replacement mops are available from your local Kirby distributor. Chapter 6 will review additional accessories that are available. The zip brush can be used to clean carpeted steps and upholstery. For best results, avoid pressing down heavily on the zip brush. Allow the brush to rotate at maximum speed by gently moving it side to side. Caution, avoid entanglement by keeping hair, loose clothing, and all parts of the body away from the spinning zip brush. To clean the zip brush, turn off the unit Remove the zip brush from the hose, turn the unit on, and use the hose to vacuum lint from the brush. Press the button on the front of the zip brush to release the brush ring. Lift the center brush out of the tool and remove any particles or lint. Place the brush back into the tool and turn it until it drops into the slots. Keeping your fingers free of the opening, snap the brush ring back in place. A hard floor pad is available to aid with dusting bare floors. It should only be used on dry floors. To install the hard floor pad, first turn the unit off. Unplug the unit. Raise the nozzle to its highest setting. Disengage the brush roll. Slide the pad below the nozzle. Then push it up into the nozzle to attach the pad using the spring clips. Plug the unit in. Lower the nozzle all the way and put tech drive in neutral before turning the unit on. The floor care system is used to buff and wax hard floors. Before using the floor care system, vacuum the floor. Heavily soiled floors may require damp mopping. To buff the floor, assemble the buffer nozzle before attaching. Drop the buffer nozzle onto the buffer brush. Push the belt up against the brush roll with your finger. While holding the belt in place, turn the belt lifter counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. You should feel tension. The belt lifter will catch the belt and stretch it upward into the nozzle. 
Attach the nozzle to the front and lock in place. Turn the belt lifter clockwise until the green arrows line up. Lower the headlight hood. Make sure tech drive is in neutral. Caution. Avoid falls or strikes by grasping the handle before turning on the floor buffer. Lower the unit until the brush roll touches the floor. Move the unit back and forth to buff the surface. To wax hard floors, assemble the wax applicator by pushing the two halves of the handle together until the pin clicks in place. Remove the wax roller from the case by inserting the handle into the open end of the wax roller. Pull the roller out of the bag and save the packaging. Use the roller to apply a small amount of wax to the floor. It is not necessary to cover the floor completely. Do not use Kirby Miracle Wax on rubber, asphalt tile, or no wax floors. Remove the wax roller from the handle by pushing the roller into the bag. Grasp both the bag and the roller firmly. Push the roller away from you to compress the spring and pull the roller off the handle. Seal the bag to prevent premature drying and store in a safe place away from children and pets. Grasp the handle firmly and turn the unit on. Make sure tech drive is in neutral. Lower the brush as far as possible, then move the unit over the floor with slow, steady strokes to spread the wax. Wait five minutes, and when dry, go over the floor with the buffer again to buff to a bright sheen. Hard floors may be rebuffed any time. It is not necessary to apply wax every time you buff. The floor buffer can also be used as a fluffer to reset matted carpet nap. Make sure tech drive is in neutral and the nozzle is all the way up. Holding the handle firmly, turn the unit on and lower the nozzle one notch at a time until the bristles contact the carpet. Lowering the brush too far can cause certain types of carpet to fuzz. Caution, avoid falls or strikes by grasping the handle before turning on the carpet fluffer. Push the unit over the carpet to reset the nap a special tile and grout brush roll to clean recessed grout lines and the natural unevenness of many tile surfaces. The tile and grout brush roll should only be used on tile floors. Use on other flooring types could damage the floor. For badly stained grout lines, apply a thin layer of Kirby tile and grout. Pretreat directly to the grout lines before scrubbing the floor. The turbo accessory can be used for a wide variety of household jobs. Assemble the unit as a canister before using the turbo accessory. Remove the head, then clean off any debris and attach the hose to the front. To use the turbo accessory as a sander, first unsnap the dust shroud at the rear of the tool and lift off. Tuck the end of the sandpaper into the front clamp and lock to hold in place. Tightly wrap the paper around the bottom, tuck in the back clamp, and lock in place. With the accessory on a level surface, wrap the dust shroud around the sander and snap it closed. Insert the hose. Caution. Avoid eye injuries by wearing safety glasses when sanding. Be sure no metal objects such as tacks or nails are sticking up from the surface to be sanded. They could damage the sander or cause sparks to ignite the dust. Turn the unit on and press the on button on top of the sander. Grip the sander at the front and rear while applying light pressure. Move the sander over the surface slowly allowing it to do the work. Don't force it or lean heavily on it. Replace the disposable filter bag after sanding. To use the turbo accessory as a polisher, attach the synthetic lamb's wool pad in the same way sandpaper is attached. However, do not use the dust shroud. Use it to polish hard waxed surfaces, such as tabletops. To use the turbo accessory for scouring, attach the scouring pad 
The dust shroud is not used when scouring. Chapter 7 will cover maintenance and troubleshooting of the system. Always turn off and unplug the unit from the wall outlet prior to performing any maintenance. Use only genuine Kirby replacement parts. To change the belt, remove the nozzle. Then, turn the belt lifter until the green arrows line up. Turn the nozzle over. Unhook the latches to remove the rug plate. The brush roll ends are marked with one, two, or three notches. Note how many notches are exposed before lifting out the brush roll. If you have difficulty removing the brush roll, tap the front bumper on a flat surface to dislodge the brush roll. Slide the old belt off and slide a new belt on. Over time, the bristles on the brush roll will wear and the height of the brush roll may need to be adjusted. To adjust the height, turn the brush roll to a higher number of notches before reinserting it. The greater the number of notches, the further the bristles are extended. If the brush roll needs to be extended beyond three notches, it is time to replace the brush roll. To reinsert the brush roll, lay the nozzle upside down in front of you with the front facing away. The light gray end of the brush roll should be in your left hand. Drop in the brush roll, making sure the same number of notches are showing on both ends. Center the belt on the brush and push it up into the unit. Then, turn the belt lifter until the red arrows line up. The belt should be stretched on the hook. Replace the rug plate. Lock it in place. Remove any debris from the motor shaft before reattaching the nozzle. Center the nozzle in front of the unit, then lock in place. Turn the belt lifter until the green arrows line up. A functional electrical cord is essential for safe operation of the unit. Be careful not to run over the cord while vacuuming and always unplug the unit by grasping the plug. If the electrical cord becomes frayed, do not use the unit. Contact an authorized Kirby Service Center for replacement. If the motor does not run when the unit is turned on, make sure the power cord is plugged in. Make sure that the nozzle or an accessory is properly attached to the front of the unit. Make sure that the mini mTOR or accessory is properly attached to the exhaust port. Push it to make sure it is clicked in place. The unit will not run unless a nozzle, hose, or the air intake guard is attached to the front of the unit and the mini mTOR, hose, or shampoo tank is properly mounted to the exhaust port. If the unit is not picking up dirt or lint from the carpeting, check to make sure the nozzle has been lowered to a proper height. Check the bag to see if it is full. If it is, change it. Check the brush roll indicator light to make sure the brush roll is spinning. If it is not spinning, check that the green arrows on the belt lifter are matched up. Check that the belt is in place and that it is not missing or broken. It is recommended to periodically check the motor shaft to make sure it is free from lint, hair, or debris buildup. The entire brush roll and belt track should also be regularly checked and cleared of lint, string, hair, and other fibers. We hope you enjoy many years of service from the Kirby Home Care System. If additional assistance is required, please contact a local Kirby distributor.